Well, let's carry on, shall we? Well, I think I've kept you guys waiting long enough. What's going on, everybody? For money subscribers who don't know me, it's your boy Shimigami X, aka your Captain Captain X. I'm your leader of Squad X and your president of Squad Double Zero. And today, I'm here to give you none other than your weekly prescribed Bleach chapter review. Today, what I'm going to be reviewing for you is Bleach chapter 613, entitled The Ordinary Peace. Now, the way I do things that is I have my subscribers ask me questions prior to me releasing the chapter. And the reason that I didn't have this review out on the Friday when I said that I would, was simply because some of the questions that you guys asked me were in very, very in-depth and very, very lengthy. And some of them I didn't have the answer to, quite bluntly. So I had to go away, I had to think about it. And now that I've thought about it, I've kind of got my thoughts together and I'm ready to analyse the chapter for you and give you the answer to some of your questions. So nonetheless, let's dive into things, but right after that intro. Alright guys, so I'm going to start off with the first question from from um, a good, a long time subscriber of mine called To Crossover. Alright, so question number one is why is Bark so eager to crush Ichigo? Alright, when chapters ago he seemed to be, he seemed to be what I'm wanting to recruit him. Okay, now the main reason that I can see that being the case is that um, Yuha sees Ichigo, Ichigo as a threat for the simple fact that he is A, part Quincy, B, part Hollow, which, um, you know, basically uh, Quincy's have, are, uh, extremely ineffective against hollows if that makes sense basically if a hollow corrupts them or ends up inside of them or ends up taking over their body or interacting with them in any way it can end up killing them as we've seen from uh, explained from several chapters ago so that's probably one of the main reasons why bark is now so eager to crush ichigo whereas before he's thinking okay this guy could be a strong ally like for example it's kind of it's a general war tactic um look at it this way if you have an if you have an enemy that is strong enough to destroy you would it make more sense to make that enemy an ally therefore eliminating the threat altogether but since Ichigo is clearly not going to be an ally to Yuha, based on the circumstances of what's happened in throughout this final uh, blood war arc, it's quite evident. It's quite evident to see why Yuha would want to crush Ichigo. So I hope that answers your first question. For question number two, that Christ basically is the crystal thing really the Soul King. I know it seems somewhat underwhelming, but as things are right now, we just have to take it at face value that you know the being inside of the crystal is the Soul King because chapters ago he was referred to as the Soul King. So. There's no reason to not believe that he is the Soul King. Yes, we found out in recent chapters that Yuha and uh, the Soul King are related um, in some way, shape, or in some way, shape, or form. Basically, father and son. Take it as you want, whether that's true or not, whether that is really is the case. Because at this point, we just really don't know. Those, these are the things that are up to speculation. I'm not really the kind to make speculation, um, go off speculation and go off opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm the kind of person to go off facts and go off deep and and go deep into my analysis. That's just the way that I work. So nonetheless, um, do I believe that the crystal is that crystal thing really the Soul King? At this point, I have to take it at face value that yes, that crystal thing really is the Soul King at this point in time. Okay, now let's move on to your third question. Part three. Okay. How can the Soul King seem so very powerful and very and so very weak at the same time? It's like he's it's like it's like he's in the form of Bark was when he was born, blind, deaf and dumb. He's there, but not doing anything or reacting in any way. Yet the Soul King, yet the Soul King dies. The universe disappears. I just can't wrap my, my mind around this. Okay, and I'm very glad you asked. Okay, that's a very good question, and I'm very glad you asked me that question. It's because a lot of people misunderstand the concept of power. Um, when it comes in terms of anime and manga in particular, or power in general, in this day and age, power isn't necessarily mili military might, or it's not exactly, it's not necessarily, um, you know, destructive capacity or the ability to be able to destroy things. That's not always in terms of, that's not always what power is. You can have power in, a multi in multiple ways. The Soul King is the most powerful being in the Bleach universe in the sense that he has the power to maintain balance throughout the entire universe of all three realms, Hueco Mundo, the human, the, the world of the living and the Soul Society. Now that in itself is power, because to be able to maintain the stability to, for beings to be able to exist within three separate worlds is power within itself. But if you're talking about destructive capacity, I don't believe that the Soul... The King of Lightning said this a long time ago, and I agree with him completely, that the Soul King has always seemed like the kind of thing that is powerful in the sense that it's able to maintain stability, or and powerful in the sense that of what it's able to do, but not powerful in the, in the sense of like, you know, destructive capacity, or being able to blow things up, or being able to crush things with, his, with spiritual pressure and things of that nature. 
There's different ways to utilize power. And that's just, and this is a perfect example of it. Being powerful doesn't necessarily make you strong. And being strong doesn't necessarily make you powerful. I hope that makes sense to you. All right, so let's move on to somebody else. All right, I'm picking these questions at random here. So I'm gonna go with, okay, I'm gonna try not to butcher your name, but you'll know, because I'm gonna put your uh, you know, your comment on the, on the bottom of this video. Hikari, Hikari, Tenchi, Hikari Tenchi, yeah, I got it right, cool. All right, what do you think Ichibe is really talking about when he narrated this chapter? And he says, Ichigo and the others cannot win, but fear not because it will lead to peace. Okay, basically, I said this one, I said this a long time ago that I don't believe that with the skill set that Ichigo has, we've only ever seen him, you know, be incredibly fast, incredibly strong, and use Getsuka Tensho. Basically, physical attacks and one energy wave attack. Even in his hollow form, his powers are not, are not changed are the same. And with somebody who has intricate abilities like Yuha, I've always said from the get go that I don't believe that Ichigo has the capabilities to be able to defeat a man like Yuha. I said that from the get go. And I've always said that this is one of the reasons why I like Bleach so much. Is that it's not necessarily like when you're talking about in terms of power in Bleach, uh, or in terms of like how powerful a character is, it's not so much about their destructive capacity, it's about their abilities and what it can do. For example, you have somebody who's physically powerful, such as the types of Genryu Yusai Yamamoto, um, whose power is to incinerate you and completely you know, eradicate your body. And yeah, we've seen it, we know what his powers do. But then you have somebody like Ichibe. Ichibe is powerful in his own right, but what Ichibe's power lies in is Ichibe's power derives from his ability. Same with, um, let me think of another example. Same with um, Aizen. Aizen's main power derives from his ability. Now, don't get me wrong, Aizen is a powerful Soul Reaper in his own right, but his main power derives from his ability of Kyokas Rigetsu to be able to do complete hypnosis. And that makes him effective against people that he should generally lose against, such as Gen Yusa Yamamoto. Yamamoto, in a sense, before Aizen went into his uh, butterfly state mode, was actually stronger than Aizen. Aizen didn't want to fight him, but Aizen did fight him simply for the fact that he knew what um, Aizen has Kyokas Rugetsu. So, it's ability, so the abilities kind of offset the difference in strength slash speed. Now, here's the thing, I'm not saying that Ichigo is now more powerful than Yuha in terms of strength and speed, because we've seen that Yuha can tango and he can hold his own. But, the thing you need to recognise is that Yuha's powers are very intricate and they're very godlike. A blunt to see, there's no two ways about that. So, when you bear that in mind, when you bear in mind what Ichigo's powers are, do you honestly think that Ichigo, Orihime, Chad, Ganju, and these guys can really defeat Yuha? When uh, Genryu Sayama, yeah, Sayamamoto couldn't do it. Um, none, of, none of the Zero Squad could do it. Come on now, really? So when, so when, so when Ichibei is saying that, oh, he doesn't believe that, you know, that we can't win this against Yuha, it makes sense. Or maybe there's an underlying reason to that. Maybe by Yuha um, stabbing the Soul King and essentially probably maybe killing the Soul King, this is a theory and this is something that I rarely do. Um, maybe somehow he obtains the power that the Soul King inside of the crystal form also has, as well as his own power, therefore becoming the true Soul King. Because you have to ask yourself, what is Yuha's um, ultimate goal? Because surely he knows that if you destroy the Soul King, that the entire universe collapses. He's not a stupid man. We've seen the way that he strategizes and plans things, so he clearly knows this. So, when you consider things like that in mind, there has to be some kind of, um, something that Yuha's gaining from this. Maybe, is it additional power? I believe so. That's just my personal beliefs about it. I believe that once Yuha has now killed the Soul King, he's somehow going to be able to absorb his powers in some way, shape or form. After all, they have been stated to be father and son. So, that's just my general thoughts about that. I hope that has uh, somewhat answered your question. I'm going to quickly browse through it again. Yeah, I believe that's the best I can answer your question. Um, I hope that suffices enough for you, and I'm going to move on to another one. All right, let's see what else we've got here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to answer this one Andre, from Andre Villa. All right, he says, yo, Captain, how you doing? You know what, thanks for asking. You know, not a lot of people ask me any questions, you know, how am I doing? You know what, I'm good. I've been a little bit stressed out lately with work and stuff. Um, you know, uni assignments and stuff have me stressed out. But nonetheless, I'm all good. You know, I'm here, I'm alive and healthy, I'm well. I've got people around me who love me. I've got family, you know, who support me through whatever I need to, any struggles I may go through. And generally, I'm in good health. So thank you, I'm all good. Anyways, on to your um, actual question related to the chapter. Okay, your, your question is not about Bleach. Your question is not about the chapter itself, but about Bleach manga in general. How long do I think the manga will last? That's something I answer in a different video, so we can move on to the second part of your question, which basically is... Okay. Okay, basically, I'll just answer your question, screw it. Okay, it says that we we're in the final climax, um, you know, of this arc. So, obviously, the final battle. Now, um, 
Judging by Kubo's like his, his pacing, the way that he's done things in the past, I say that Bleach will either end, I believe Bleach is going to end this year. I say Bleach will either end this year or very early next year. That's just my general thoughts about that. So um, the reasons I say that are just, just simply because of the pacing I've seen Kubo go on in the past and things of that nature. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to uh, stop with the questions now because some of you guys are asking me some, asking some lengthy questions. I'm going to put those on pause for like another video or something. So if I didn't get through to your question, don't think that I've completely ignored it. It's just a case of that, like, you know, I don't want this video to be too, too long. And, you know, I need to review the chapter now that I've answered your questions. All right. So now that I've answered your question, it's time for me to review the chapter. So now we're going to be reviewing Bleach chapter 613, The Ordinary Peace. This chapter was uh, somewhat very, very, very interesting. And the reason I say it's very interesting, while some reviewers might think it may think it was lackluster, was a simple fact of this. There were a lot of things that were hinted. <clears throat> it's one of those chapters that leave you asking more questions. And more things were hinted. More things were hinted at than things that were answered. So it seems like from one of the questions that I answered as well, and from the general theme of this chapter, that, that Yuha is after more than just wanting to kill the Soul King. Because there has to be a method behind the madness. Because destroying Soul King will inevitably will inevitably destroy the entire Bleach universe. So why on earth would he do it? There has to be some reason to, as to why he's doing that because we all know that why this war started was basically for the, the, the war started for the simple reasons that the way that the Quincy killed Hollows was basically it disrupted the balance. Now, but the reasons that uh, Quincy's even ho destroyed Hollows because Hollows attacked them and they obviously have to defend themselves. And obviously Shinigami wanted to protect the balance I'll just have uh, taken out the Quincy, and that's why we have this thousand-year blood war at the moment. So you can see, you can tell that the that Yuha has a definite grudge against you know the Shinigami, which is why he goes about slaughtering and he's declared war against them. So now, what does that have to do with the Soul King himself? Is it a simple case of that you know uh, the Soul King could have done something? And he's been sitting there all this time. We don't know. Or is it a case of that Yuha <clears throat> destroying the Soul King will grant him additional power, then being able to grant the Quincy the power to be able to, to destroy? Hollows in a certain way, therefore maintaining the balance. So is Yuha inevitably the good guy in all of this, even though he goes about things in a very dark fashion? Because the question you need to ask yourself in Bleach is who is truly um, good and evil? Because the bottom line is we don't know. It depends on what perspective you look at things from. Because if you look at things from the side of the Shinigami, you would say that the Quincy are evil. But if you were a Quincy and you were doing nothing but defending yourself from Hollows um, your entire life, then Shinigami is, uh, decide to slaughter you for defending yourself. Would you not consider the Shinigami as evil? That's something that you need to ask yourself. Okay. Now, in terms of, you know, I've already mentioned why I don't, why Ichigo wouldn't be able to defeat Yuha. It makes perfect sense to me, just based on what his powers and abilities are. And especially when you have Chad or Ahime, like, yeah, they may have powered up, yeah, they may have progressed, but are they really on the level to tangle with Yuha? Come on now, they're really not. Now, if we look at the chapter as a whole, overall, this chapter was a good read, just for the simple fact that it's one of those chapters that leave you asking more questions than answers being revealed. So therefore, building up the anticipation as to what's going to happen next especially when you have loads of plot devices going on all over the place you have Kisuke Urahara down in, in the Serate about to send the captains up you know um, to do something with their Reiatsu to obviously help I'm not sure exactly what difference it's going to make but we're going to have to wait and see you've also got um, you've also got Shunsui who's gone to Central 46 possibly to speak to Aizen that's another thing that's developing in the mix right then and there so you've got loads of plot devices going on and you've also got um, the case of Joshiro Ukutake Normally he's, he's always been very sick and he's always been very unhealthy, but for some reason it seems like he's completely fine. We saw the last time we saw him, he had this shadowy, fig shadowy figure behind him, like um, that took the form of a shadow. Where has it gone in this chapter? Who knows? Maybe that it's already taken effect? Who knows? See, not, it's, not all, it's not everything that I have the answer to, because at the end of the day, I don't write the series. I just review the stuff, and I'm trying to do the best that I can in reviewing the stuff. So, with all that being said, I hope that my review has sufficed for you this week. I hope you guys have um, appreciated the answer to my questions, and those questions that I haven't been able to answer, or I thought the ones that were, uh, were a bit too long for this review, I will answer them in a separate video, like outside of a Bleach chapter review. So, stay tuned for those. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I believe you guys have um, heard me rambling on enough. It's your boy Shinigami X, aka your Captain Captain X. I'm your leader of Squad X and your president of Squad Double Zero. I'm signing out. And as always, my people, take care and peace. And as I always say, keep it 99 plus one. I'm out.